of Public Enterprises for South Africa. A round of applause, please. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, friends, all protocol observed. My name is David Ashdown. I'm the Managing Director of Spintelligent, the organisers of African Utility Week. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the 27th edition of African Utility Week and Energy Revolution Africa. Firstly, a little recognition for an appreciation to our partners and sponsors who support us annually to ensure that this event is a success for you, the, the power professionals across Africa. Host Ministry, the Department of Energy, Host Utility, ESCOM, the host city, the wonderful city of Cape Town. Thank you very much for allowing us to, to run our event here in your city again. The diamond sponsor, KPMG, your continued support year on year is really available to us and it helps us point this, direct, point this event in the right direction going forward. Our platinum sponsors, EPG, GE, Huawei, Landis & Gear, Lucy Electric, Ontech, Shell Lubricants, thank you very much. Our international business support partner, Business Beyond Borders, and a raft of supporting trade associations, both regional and national and continental. Thank you very much for your support again. So every year we gather here as the premier meeting point for the African power and energy sector delivering discussion and debate on the current hot topics in the industry sector, connecting the leaders of industry on the seemingly eternal struggle to deliver consistent, sustainable, affordable power to Africa. And this year, I believe, is no exception. I think we've managed to gather a huge amount of uh, industry professionals in Cape Town again. So looking back at AUW 2016, 
I'm going to ask if a graphic can be placed up on the, on the banner. So those of you who were here last year, you'll recognize this as our graphic wall. Um, it's, produced, it's produced by a graphic artist that we have over the last, uh, we here for the last three days and was here last year. And it really allows us to, to take a snapshot of the power space in 2016 and allows us to shape the event for the future. I'd like to identify a few highlights from this, from this graphic, and I'm sure you can read it from the way you're sitting today. Disruptive technology is changing the landscape of the energy mix. There's a need to stamp out corruption, both within, within businesses and within countries across the continent. Microgrid technology is the future of energy distribution. Improved generation efficiency and transmission efficiency before adding capacity. Support entrepreneurs across the sector. Allow their influence and their ideas to shape this industry sector going forward. Use platforms such as AUW and other industry events to share content and to share best practice. Ensure an effective energy generation mix going forward through fossil, through renewable, and potentially through nuclear power. We use this type of feedback to create and sculpt an event that answers your needs. And what we've, where we've spent a long time with our advisory board, our continental advisory board, is to understand how we best put this event together for you. In 2017, African Utility Week, by definition, is taking a look and a deeper dive into utility scale projects. We've introduced Energy Revolution Africa, which is taking a dive into community scale projects and disruptive technologies. You'll, you'll understand when you, when you attend the workshop, which is directly across the concourse area, adjacent to the Tesla Powerwall. There's a multiple track conference covering the full spectrum of the power, energy, and water nexus. Workshops on the floor to train and educate industry operators and to earn CPD points. We have the largest exhibition of industry suppliers and services anywhere on the continent. We introduced the Innovation Hub and the Initiate program, showcasing entrepreneurial suppliers pushing the development sector uh, of the industry. We welcome the Utility CEO Forum for Power and the Utility CEO Forum for Water, a closed door by invitation only private meeting uh, which is being hosted uh, at the CTICC over the next two days. We have the African Energy Elites, the leading and exclusive connectivity platform for the buy and sell side of our industry. We have a business matchmaking with over 1,500 already pre-qualified pre meetings taking place during the next three days. We have site visits across the Western Cape and we have co-located events, the Africa Power Finance and Investment Forum, the AUTC Africa Conference, the Nuclear Power Africa Conference, and the Gas to Power World Congress. All of this then supported by ESI Africa, the premier media partner. Through these comprehensive channels, African Utility Week and Energy Revolution will report back to you on where we stand on this development journey through the power, energy, and water sector. Look for the wall this year and make sure you add your feedback we're producing this on an annual basis, and I think it's going to make a really powerful and engaging impact on how this event devolves and how the sector evolves over the coming years. So that's the, uh, that, that's the, the rhetoric bit. Exhibitions are about connections. It's about you meeting with your industry partner. It's about you making business transactions. It's about you fostering deals and the ability to grow your business. Without your engagement and support, we would not find success in organizing such a platform. So our role is to connect you. So what I'd like you to do, if you possible, I'm assuming that all of you carry these in your, business, in your pockets. They're your business cards. Could everybody take out their business cards now, please, and hold them in the air for me? I don't see enough hands. Can I, can I ask everyone to hold their business cards in the air? OK. I'm going to give you two minutes. I'd like you to take two minutes to introduce yourself to the person on your left, the person on your right, and the people in front and behind you. You never know who's sitting around you today, and you might just find that business partner that you've always wanted to meet. Okay? So take two minutes. I'm going to introduce myself to the speakers on the stage.
how people can spend five minutes just getting to know each other. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I see you're, you're very much in the spirit of connecting today, which is fantastic. Please, please ensure that this continues out in the, uh, in the exhibition floor, visiting all the companies that are presenting their products to you today, through the, through the conference tracks that we're running. We really, we really request that you engage in the conferencing as well. Ask questions, get involved. Discussion and debate is really the, the, the hot spot of what we do in our industry sector, and it's your feedback that allows the, the real positive discussion. Positive controversy is something that we really, we really want to see. Um, it allows us to really address the challenges within your industry sector for you. So if you want to be heard, if you want to share your opinion, if you want to share something that inspires you, if you want to, see, if you want to share something that you've learned or your takeaways from the day, we are on all of the social media platforms. All we need you to do is simply connect with the world on hashtag AUW2017. That's AUW, hashtag AUW2017. You'll find it in your show guides. We request again that you, you do share find it, your findings and what, what you enjoy about the event and what you've learned. In fact, why not now take a quick snapshot of me on the stage and our special guests and announce that AUW2017 is open for business. I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to the project team who have worked this past year to deliver this event. Your dedication and commitment to this product is incredible. And on behalf of everyone in this room, I'd like to say congratulations and thank you for putting on such a fabulous event. At this point, I'd like to introduce the keynote sessions. The host today is Bonnie Tunya. He's the presenter from CNBC Africa, based in Kenya. He will take over the proceedings and introduce the first of two keynote discussions and presentations. I'd like to thank you for your time this morning, and I wish all delegates, sponsors, exhibitors, and guests a profitable, engaging time over the next three days, and I look forward to welcoming you back to Cape Town in 2018. Good luck. Enjoy. Good morning. Good morning. Are we excited? Let me just take this chance to welcome all of us to the African Utility Week 2017 right here in Cape Town. Um, what we try to do for the next few days is probably try to midwife an energy revolution. And as they say, most revolutions will not be televised. I think this one will because I'm seeing a lot of media in the house. Thank you for coming out. Um, the next few moments we'll spend to just try to set the scene for us uh, in trying to understand where we are and where we need to go as professionals in the utility space on the continent. There's obviously a lot of opportunities that are bound. I saw when people are exchanging cards, and that shows there's a lot of connections that will be made here in the next few days. And so just building on that is, uh, I'd like to suggest to us a few thoughts even as we carry on. And I'd like us to wonder, what is our role in this energy revolution that we talk about? We've talked about the fourth industrial revolution that is with us, but what is the role that we do get to play? And are we ready? And who gets to power this? So just hold those thoughts. If you have a piece of paper, you can scribble some of your thoughts there. Who knows? Maybe you just have the answer for us. Right, onwards, onwards. I'd like to, at this point to call our first uh, speaker to just give us the context in which we operate today. It is my pleasure to introduce the Ambassador Trin Rask Tigerson, who is a Danish ambassador to South Africa. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, Chairman of ESCOM. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Africa's role in the world, and it's important as partner for the EU, is uh, growing. The fifth Africa-EU summit in November, upcoming G7, G20 summits, all take place with Africa high on the international agenda. It's underlining that Africa is a key partner in the global economy, uh, and uh, Africa is, uh, as Africa's closest neighbor, the EU is the continent's main uh, foreign investor and trading partner. But trade, and especially innovation, uh, that comes with a two-way traffic. Africa is also increasingly important for the EU. 
Major African markets with strong growth rates represent significant partners for our companies in terms of both trade and investment here on the continent. The European Commission and the EU High Representative have just set out the EU's political priorities and concrete proposals for a stronger strategic partnership with Africa. The EU Commission presents innovative proposals in a number of key areas such as peace and security, migration, job creation, energy and water. It's based on the priorities defined by the African countries and it's stepping up the existing fruitful cooperation between the two continents. The rise of Africa is important to the world. From a trade perspective, the EU is a large, uh, extent, to a large extent dependent on our own uh, exports. We have 30 million jobs uh, that are export focused. And with an estimated 90% of global growth coming from outside of the EU, the next years, uh, for the next years, especially our SMEs need further support uh, to go international. And in this context, the European Commission are funding the Business uh, Beyond Borders uh, project implemented by the Euro Chamber. The main objective of the Business uh, Beyond Border project is to help the EU businesses, in particular SMEs and clusters, to operate internationally, engaging in business opportunities. And our doors are open for Africa. This project is provided, providing additional support to companies and the clusters, and I'm excited to see many new partners, business partnerships form from this, and I strongly urge you to contact the Euro Chamber's colleagues throughout these coming days to learn more about the program, or visit the uh, Business uh, Beyond Borders Project Pavilion uh, if you are already interested in uh, direct participation. But what are the business opportunities in Africa when it comes to energy and water sector? Using South Africa as an example, massive investment can be attracted from renewable energy. Close to uh, 200 billion rand uh, has been brought into the country via renewables. In 2015, this translated into uh, astonishing 85% of the foreign investments here in South Africa. Through the independent power producers, the price of solar PV and wind is today 40% cheaper than base load coal. Denmark is currently supporting setting up uh, some of the same structures, IPP offices in Ethiopia, very much inspired uh, by South Africa. And all over the continent, from Morocco to Kenya, from Algeria to Ghana, an impressive amount of renewable energy production is lighting up this continent. Despite renewables having so many uh, obvious uh, positive qualities, I keep being told that the wind never blows when we need it and the sun never shines when we need the energy and that integrating variable energy sources into the grid is too big a challenge. Technology, however, uh, is already here providing solution. European coal power plants have been uh, optimized so to become a source of variable energy. They start up faster at a lower but stable level and can always be used uh, as a quick uh, and flexible backup when the sun or the wind is not enough. Consequently, some European coal power plants that were originally designed as base load units have been transformed into more flexible power plants, the most flexible power plants in the world. Integrating variable renewable energy sources into the grid is absolutely doable, also here in Africa, and it is an integral part of a forward-looking energy system. It's both good for the environment uh, and it's uh, good for the economy. And more innovation is just around the corner. I look forward to be walking the Africa utility floor and to see some new energy solutions there. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know water is life. In addition to being essential for drinking and sanitation, water is a necessary input to all forms of production, including agriculture, industry, energy, and transport. According to the World Health Organization, for every one dollar invested in water and sanitation, there is an economic return of between three and 34 dollars. However, within the water sector, we have yet to see private engagement pick up at a sufficient pace. As an example, when it comes to building new infrastructure, less than 4% of all new construction projects in Africa last year was related to water. This is a great challenge, and we must come together to solve this. And the problems are imminent. Estimated 5% of GDP in sub-Saharan Africa is lost every year as a direct result of polluted or contaminated water. Lack of water or poor uh, sanitation. More than 300 million people in sub-Saharan Africa are without access to improved reliable drinking water sources. Less than one in three people in sub-Saharan Africa have access to a proper toilet. 
Even though the great economic return on water uh, investments is well known, we have historically seen less investment than in many other sectors, and the investments are mainly by government with little participation from private sector. I firmly believe that the answer to unlocking more potential lies in the formulation of public-private partnerships within the water sector. A key tool is to ensure uh, streamlined government, uh, governance models that allows the private sector to come in. In this uh, aspect, corporatizing in Denmark has been part of that governance, uh, government, uh, governance uh, model. Here, state-owned local water utilities are required uh, to provide revenue and high, high uh, service levels. This has enabled a society where water loss is below 6%, and where the treatment of water is not only energy neutral, but actually uh, supplies energy to the grid. Indeed, how we work together across private and public sector hold the key for unlocking the potential in our societies. Being the Danish ambassador, I hope it's okay that I also do a little bit of, of commercial uh, advertising here, uh, because tomorrow uh, the day, there will be a Danish uh, session uh, here at the Utility Week that is called Danish Water Governance model, a little bit what I talked about here. It's about the corporatized but highly regulated and efficient system. So it's not privatization, it's corporatization. So it's still the government that is running it, but it allows the private sector to come in. And this will be giving, this address will be given by one of our experts from the ministry in Denmark. And Thursday we have a Danish roundtable on public-private partnership for municipal water infrastructure to build potential opportunities and, and what, what are the potential, the opportunities and the barriers for the private sector. And then of course you also need to come and see the Danish pavilions where we have a lot of interesting uh, technology solutions down uh, in the hall. But ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, private sector is well placed to lead and support most types of infrastructure development and operation, but it needs active and intelligent government participation. I'm therefore reaching out to all of you today, governments, civil society and private sector. You are the ones who will play a key role keeping Africa rising. You are the ones uh, who through public-private partnerships and increased cooperation will unlock even more of the potential of this com continent. May the Africa Utility Week be an important platform for engaging in new, sustainable and inclusive economic development in Africa as well as for the country, uh, countries in the EU. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for your kind words. And also just for pointing out very, something very key that for us to unlock this potential that we so much talk about, there's need for public-private partnerships. And I guess we've talked about that for a very long time. Why there's still a lot more ground to be covered is a discussion that probably we'll have at a later session. But at this point, I'd like to invite uh, the board chairman of ESCOM South Africa, Ben Gubane, to give his address, after which he will invite the Honorable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Tunya, our Master of Ceremony, the Honorable Jacobe Ben Martins, Deputy Minister of Public Enterprises of South Africa, the CEO, the, the Ambassador of Denmark, Tigersen, the CEO of uh, Utilities Week, uh, Mr. David Ashdown, the heads of utilities present here, executives of the different utilities, ladies and gentlemen. As chairman of the ESCOM board and host energy utility, it gives me great pleasure to officially welcome you to South Africa, first as neighbors, and secondly as future potential partners who trade together. Fortunately, Cape Town is much warmer than Johannesburg, so I think you'll enjoy your stay in South Africa. I also welcome you on behalf of the executive management of ESCOM. Our CEO, unfortunately, has got another agent business to attend to, so I extend the welcome in his name. ESCOM is proud of our association with the Africa Utility Week. It's a flagship event in our diary. We have several undertakings in parallel from hosting the CEO forum to several partnership engagements, and I look forward to seeing you in person at some of these events. Two weeks ago, 
world leaders in business and government and civil society came to Durban to discuss the regional World Economic Forum on Africa and most of our presidents, prime ministers and leaders were present. Today you are here on a sim similar venture. The Africa Utilities Week is a mini WEF for Africa's energy sector. When you put up the transmission wires, the national grids, every activity in the country hangs from that grid and from those transmission grids. Generation is important, but transmission is even more critical for our economies and the well-being of our people. The underlying theme at WEF revolved around the 2016 theme of the fourth industrial revolution described by Professor Klaus Schwab as a fundamental shift in how we produce, consume, and relate to one another, driven by the convergence of the physical world, the digital world, and human beings ourselves. Africa is an emerging market in particular, Africa's energy industry, or to consider what this fourth industrial revolution means for us as a continent, and how we can leapfrog this wave of change to the benefit of our individual economies. The International Monetary Fund has indicated that growth in sub-Saharan Africa should recover slightly to 2.6% this year. This will be after more than two decades low in 2016. African economies were growing very promisingly, but unfortunately with different shocks in the international community, particularly in the oil industry, our growth, collective growth, aggregate growth diminished. The recovery that we expect will be due to recovery in oil production in Nigeria and other oil producing African countries. We expect higher public spending ahead of elections in Angola and the recovery from the effects of the drought in South Africa. In non-oil producing countries such as Ivory Coast, Kenya and Senegal, growth is expected to remain strong at over 5%. Price Waterhouse Cooper's Africa Business Agenda 2017 their report shows that Africa's economy has more than tripled since the year 2000, although today uncertain economic growth is a concern. On this positive note, no less than 97% of African CEOs were confident in their own company's growth potential and talked to the increased willingness to invest locally. The report goes on to add that Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, and Uganda are seen as the top five investor partners of choice by African executives. This is an opportune time to invest in the region and secure gains as our markets expand. However, doing so in ways that ensure mutual benefits will have to be the key concern for our investments planning and implementation. Leveraging local as well as international investors through mutually beneficial returns should be explored. Such developments will have implications for the growth strategy, integrated African strategy, partnerships with local investors and future states, and of course, Africa's industrialization. At the January 2017 Davos meeting, the global, sh global shapers community connected with African leaders from emerging markets to discuss these very issues. While a great deal was discussed, and in particular the need to improve infrastructure, education and leadership models in Africa, it was clear that innovation in Africa was critical and that institutional reform was needed to foster innovation. For me, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that the energy industry in Africa explores 
how new ideas can be born through collaborative networks of research institutions that bring business, utilities, and countries together. In this way, we can define a research agenda to address our specific industry needs, to build infrastructure, local skills, and capability, and to develop appropriate intellectual property. In this spirit of collaboration and innovation, today you will learn that ESCOM will officially be the first energy partner in South Africa to endorse the Huawei Open Lab in, in Smart Grid Innovation. The Huawei ESCOM collaboration will seek to develop the next, extra, the next era of power Internet of Things, power cloud, transmission and distribution telecom, and cybersecurity solutions, as well as advanced analytics for grid operations in order to drive digital transformation in the industry. The fourth industrial revolution may bring us closer to realizing Africa's dream of an interconnected smart African grid, which is huge due to the potential of energy resources on the continent, including South Africa's excess electricity capacity. The fourth industrial revolution is the potential of providing Africans with an opportunity to discover new solutions that could revolutionize the energy industry and leverage advanced technology solutions for a reliable and sustainable power grid. Let us all be reminded of the role that each individual, organization, institution, and government must play in improving the lives of our fellow Africans. The developmental needs of our continent are vast. As leaders and players in the energy space, we need to recognize that energy supply must contribute to more than just enabling economic growth through abundant energy supply. Energy supply must be leveraged to maximize all aspects of sustainable development, which include economic, social, and environmental development. In the words of the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, energy is the golden thread that connects economic growth, social equity, and environmental sustainability. And I was happy to hear Your Excellency Ambassador of Denmark state the readiness your country has in cooperating with African utilities and generally looking at all aspects and technologies in the generation of electricity. Our minister, our deputy minister, Honorable Ben Martins, will welcome you and talk to you further about the opportunities we have during this Africa Utility Week. Our Deputy Minister is a freedom fighter and a soldier of the Mkondo Sizwe. He did years on Robben Island, imprisoned for his activities. However, he used some of the time to study for a BA degree with the University of South Africa. When he was released, he entered for an LLB course at the University of Guazulu Natal. Peter Marisberg Campus. He did his master's in law, LLM, at UCT. He also did a postgraduate diploma in management, e economics, and law at the University of Cape Town. He's an extremely accomplished man. He has produced two anthologies of African poetry and has produced essays on arts and culture with respect to our continent and our different heritages. He trained in visual arts, and he has painted some fairly outstanding pieces of art. So here we have a, a very cultured man who should probably spend some of his time teaching the younger generation at universities because they need this type of experience and the value systems that he embodies as an individual. So wishing you great success this week. It gives me pleasure to call on our Deputy Minister to address you. Thank you.
Program Director, Mr. David Ashdown, Managing Director of uh, Spin Intelligent, Your Excellency Ambassador Fichersen, the Danish Ambassador to South Africa, Your Excellency Ambassador Dr. Ben Ngubani, ESCOM Board Chairperson. I always remind him that uh, it is only politicians that are former ministers of energy, former ministers of transport. But once you, are, once you have been an ambassador, you are ambassador for life. So he is our former ambassador to Japan and other places. Thus he remains your excellency. Esteemed government officials, stakeholders, and thought leaders, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I must commence with a small confession. When we walked up the stage and the lights were switched off and the disco lights came on, I was a very worried man. I had not been in a disco for more than 25 years or so. And I was worried at the thought of being asked to dance or sing. Those are two areas that I'm very inadequate in. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct privilege and honor to welcome you to the African Utility Week 2017 on behalf of the South African government. The conference comes at a time when Africa faces mounting challenges with regard to access to sustainable modern energy services, which are a prerequisite for meeting basic human needs for economic and social development. It is a well-known self-evident fact that without efficient clean energy and adequate water supply, efforts to engage effectively in productive commercial activities to improve the standard and quality of life are gravely undermined. The 17th Africa Utility Week 2017 offers a unique networking opportunity for all stakeholders involved in power generation, transmission, distribution, metering, clean energy, generation, water supply, and energy efficiency. African Utility Week thus continues to provide a platform to problematize issues and to find newfangled solutions and best practice to case studies from Africa and beyond. It is therefore vital for power and water professionals to share knowledge and to collaborate on a regional basis to promote realistic solutions. Africa's wealth in natural resources remains a possible catalyst for unlocking its heightened manufacturing and industrialization potential. A great deal of this potential will, however, hinge on the availability of stable and reliable infrastructure and strategic corridors needed to start industries and to qualitatively improve the standard of business throughout the continent.
lack of sufficient electricity and access to water in Africa remains one of the biggest barriers to development and prosperity. This state of affairs continues to trap millions of our people in extreme poverty and underdevelopment. The current energy deficit in Africa continues to be alarming. It is estimated that energy-related challenges such as power shortages and expensive off-grid solutions cost African economies 2 to 4 percent of their gross domestic product every year. In South Africa, closer home, before the dawn of democracy, there was inadequate investment in infrastructure in general and in African, colored, and Indian areas in particular, which left a sizable portion of the population without access to meaningful basic services. Another fact is that over the colonial and apartheid period, only 35% of the South African population had access to electricity. In stark contrast to this, the African National led the African National Congress-led democratic government has rolled out electricity service to over 88% of the population in a period more slightly than 20 years since 1994. Investment in power and energy infrastructure constitutes a significant step that African countries need to undertake to effect economic development. Regional integration in a mutually beneficial manner remains a very important challenge. Through its participation in SEDEC, through the Southern African Power Pool and partnerships in Sub-Saharan Africa, ESCOM is committed to promoting institutional and utility capacity building through exchange programs and fora with the objective of achieving long-term regional reliability and the Africa electricity master plan. Promoting regional cooperation and integration through energy pooling and cross-border flows is key in minimizing the cost of supply as a result of economies of scale. A regional approach to energy resources development would further enhance reliability and security of supply. Pursuing investments that will ensure a more reliable and secure electricity supply should be the determining factor in the decision to build power systems, interconnections, and to enter into inter-utility exporting agreements amongst neighboring countries. In Europe and the United States of America, for example, power pooling amongst utilities has been proven to effectively harness savings in operating costs and to secure reliability of grid through coordinated interchange of power, energy, and related services. 
Similarly, there is likely benefit to be had where regions accelerate the integration and connectedness in order to leverage on each other's strengths and resources. It thus becomes important for regional policymakers and the power utility industry to identify potential infrastructure investments where regional synergies can be leveraged. Furthermore, research and development are critical in coming up with affordable solutions to alleviate and eradicate poverty. I should like to thank the conference organizers and assure our guests of, South African, of the South African government and the South African energy and water stakeholders' commitment to work in partnership with you to together find solutions to the development challenges facing all of us. It's only through greater cooperation and closely working together that we can ensure prosperity for the individuals, the citizens of our country. I would like to thank you for having given me the opportunity to address you. And I would also like to ask for your indulgence. Before I came here, I was supposed to be part of a cabinet committee, and I asked to be excused from the cabinet committee in order to come and share a few words and thoughts with you. So immediately after my address, although I would have loved to interact and look at the exhibitions, I will unfortunately have to go back to the cabinet meetings. But however, much later in the day, I will endeavor to come back and be with you also partly tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. Great, ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause to my panelists as they take their leave. Great, so what you've had to me were a lot of commitments, a lot of hope, and a lot of talk about what we could do if we could partner. For the next few moments, we're going to listen to different professional players in these fields who are actually on the ground interacting with the day-to-day -day happenings of the needs of energy and power on the continent. And so I'd like to invite the next four gentlemen on stage. Round of applause, please, as they come. Encourage them, please. Thank you. And before I take my seat, I'd like to very quickly introduce them so that you know by what authority they speak the things they're about to. First, I'd like to introduce James Stewart on my far left. Uh, James Stewart is the uh, he uh, Global Head of Infrastructure at KPMG UK. Um, next to uh, James is Alistair Habertson, who's a Director for, at Investec Asset Management South Africa. We also have Mr. Lazarus Agbazo, who's a Chief Executive Officer, Energy Connections Business at GE Sub-Saharan Africa. Last but certainly not least, Andrew Hakovitz, who's a coordinator for Power Africa USA. Thank you very much. Um, so, gentlemen, I mean, we've followed through the commitments made by, uh, by the minister, by ESCOM, and by the ambassador, and it, it all points to everybody is in this concerted effort of taking Africa to the next level. 